traditional breadboard ends are really cool, but take a whole lot of time and work. So sometimes you just gotta cheat them in order to get it done quicker, just cause it's easier. And uh, you know, maybe your client doesn't wanna pay for all the time that it takes to do a breadboard end the, uh, the quote right way. Well, there are ways to cheat them and there's ways you don't wanna cheat them right. Uh, a common way you see sometimes is people just pocket hold these in. The problem and the reason why breadboard ends get so complicated is the way wood moves this tabletop is gonna expand and contract this way, but this board's gonna go this way. So if we rigidly attach this, there's gonna be issues with all these boards trying to move while this one doesn't move in kind. So we have to account for that. I'm going to use some steel straps that we made up in the shop and my domino, of course this can be done without a domino. The domino for me is mostly alignment because these are going to be providing all of the strength that we need. So here's the plan. One of the things I did to help draw your eye away from noticing any inconsistencies was put a light chamfer on both of these. So I chamfered this side and chamfered this side. That way we have a little divot. So if there's any irregularities, it's not gonna pop out like crazy to your eye. I need to get new tracks for my track saw. So this table is dipping in a little bit from when I cut it. One trick that I, I didn't do that I should have is tipped the blade on my track saw to bevel in some. And what that does is make sure that this lower bit is farther behind the top edge, which is gonna give you a cleaner line up front because you make sure that nothing down here is you know bumping out, causing a, a gap. I didn't do that, something I should have done. But anyway, as you can see, this table is actually bowed a little bit, which is one of the things breadboard ends do is help keep tables flat. Well, I wanna make sure that the top of this is in line with the top of the table, and that's where the domino is gonna come in. And also we talked about, we have to count for the wood movement. That's another reason I like the domino. I'll go over some other ways you can achieve this, but I'm just gonna do some plunge cuts, three, one on each end and one in the middle of this and then my breadboard, and we'll talk about the settings I use. To save making some marks, I'm just gonna use the bump stops on each, on the end of the board and the end of the table, and I only marked the center. And for all three mortises going into the tabletop, I'm gonna use the tight setting. So there's no slop, the tenon is gonna fit in there nice and snug. I just eyeballed center and didn't mark it. That's why these aren't lining up because when I turn this board around, everything's gonna line up. But you can see in the middle, I did a tight mortise on both of these to make sure the middle is locked because I want all expansion to direct out from the middle. Then on the ends, I have a tight mortise on the tabletop and I did a wider a loose mortise on the end so that way this, the tenon was gonna be able to float in this as the table expands and contracts throughout the seasons. Now to also go with that is the way we apply the glue. So for the tenons that are going on the end, I'm only going to put glue on one end because it doesn't really help me make sure this floats. If it's glued inside of here, then it can't float. So I only want the glue to go inside the table. But for my tenon in the middle, this is the one that locks it. So I'm gonna put glue all around on both sides and really slather it up. We got it flipped over. These are the steel straps we made. It's just some um, 3 16 inch steel that we cut into six inch pieces, put three holes into. When we first started screwing them, we actually had little clusters. But then I realized when you're pushing on this, the weak point of this type of joining it this way is going to be where the screws go into the wood. And by having all of them far away, we're actually increasing the lever. So the more force you applied here, you know, it grew the force that was on this point. So then we got smart and we brought the middle hose holes closer together so they'd be closer to the lip to shorten the leverage whenever someone's pushing on the edge of the table to get up like a barbarian. And now we're about to screw these in with some screws that I'm very hopeful will not blow through the tops and ruin all the work so far. Also, last note, when we did these screws and the holes, you can see the holes are a fair bit oversized from the screws. Same deal with the expansion and contraction. If these holes were the right size, it doesn't matter that we took all that time with the dominoes. If we lock these in and these wouldn't allow some, some slop and growth. So that little wiggle room is gonna let everything move the way God intended. Yeah. 
And there you go. It's a quick and easy way to do some breadboard ends. If you don't have a domino, you could also use dowels to keep things aligned. The trick is they don't allow for the expansion, so you could only use that in the middle. Biscuits, though, tend to have slops, so you could use biscuits to help alignment. Although, really, with the steel straps, so long as your material is the proper thickness, um, the same thickness, your breadboard, breadboards as the rest of the table, those steel straps are going to pull everything flat. I just have the domino add a little bit more strength. Made me feel better to use that, so I did. But yeah, hope uh, that was helpful for you. If you're interested in seeing the whole video on these tables, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so YouTube actually lets you know when I do put out the video on these tables that are coming. These are really cool. Anyway, I hope you learned something, were inspired or entertained, and until next time, make time to make something.